Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to our NCO webinar. I am Kath Arledge, the Artistic and Educational Director of NCO, and today I am joined by three remarkable, wonderful, amazing young musicians who were all once in NCO in, and are now um, category finalists in the BBC Young Musician of the Year competition. We're joined today by the oboist Ewan Miller. Hi, Ewan. Hi. And by the trombonist Maggie Murphy. Hi, Maggie. Hello. And by the percussionist Toril Azadini Mashaclair. Hi, Toril. Welcome, everybody. Now, just to tell you how to join in the webinar, everybody at home, I can see all the numbers are, we've got 106 in already, and it's climbing, 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 so that's brilliant. Um, in order to answer a question, you just click on the Q&A button at the bottom of the screen, type in your questions for us, and uh, remember about the polling, you, so there'll be very, various polls that pop up that you can vote on during the course of the webinar, and we'll find out some secrets about these wonderful young people. And finally, there's also going to be a really fun selfie again at the end. So any um, instruments or props or fun things you want to get ready for your webinar selfie, uh, find a moment to get those ready and we'll, we'll do that at the very end. Okay, so let's meet our amazing guests. I'm going to ask them to introduce themselves. Could you kick things off for us, Ewan? Uh, so my name is Ewan Miller. I'm an oboist. Uh, I was an NCO for five years from about the age of nine to 14. Um, so I come from uh, Reading in sort of the southeast, quite near London, and uh, yeah, I'm now in my first year studying music at Oxford Uni. Um, do you come from a musical family, Ewan? I do. I have my my mum's a music teacher. My dad's a sort of uh, he likes to play his violin a lot. He's a doctor, um, and then both my siblings did NCO as well. They were a bassoonist and French hornist, and we had a. I think it was about 15 or 16 years of consecutive siblings in NCO. We, we were sort of perfectly spaced. So I, yeah, I think I was um, not born when I went to my first NCO concert. My <laughs> brother, when he was sort of nine or 10. Wow, amazing. Thank you, Ewan. All right, hi, Maggie. Could you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about you? Yeah, hello, um, I'm Maggie. Um, I'm 19, I play the trombone and I live in Cardiff. Um, I started playing the trombone when I was about nine. Um, and now I'm in my first year at the Royal Academy of Music in London. Do you come from a musical family, Maggie? Yeah, I've got quite a musical family. So my mum plays a bit of flute and piano. Um, my dad's in a choir called Penderis um, in Wales, which is fun. And then um, I have three half siblings and my brother who all played instruments. They kind of don't now, but that's how I got into music. So yeah. Fantastic. And Toril, could you introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Toril uh, and I play percussion. Uh, and I live in Horsham, which is uh, south of London. It's uh, about halfway to, to the seaside, uh, to the south. Um, and currently I'm uh, at the Royal College of Music Studio Department. I'm in, well, my last year, although technically I'm not really there, hardly there anymore, you know, because of, of uh, coronavirus. Uh, but I'll be returning back to the RCM uh, next to do it uh, for Music College. Uh, and uh, I used to live in France, actually, I'm French. Uh, I moved here when I was five. My parents aren't, uh, I mean, they're amateur musicians, but they're definitely not, you know, don't sing in cool choirs like Maggie's parents. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the wonderful, one of the wonderful things is that you all know each other because you were all in NCO together. Could you, could uh, Ewan, could you just share a, um, an NCO memory with us? Um, well, yeah, so we were, I know that I was in NCO for pretty much the, the entire time with Toral. We both did under 11s twice and then under 12, 13s uh, main. Um, and Maggie was there for, for two of those years as well. And we were all in the same NCO for the main. Uh, oh, I remember at, at, in one of the NCOs, we did um, Ravel's Bolero for which Toral was the snare drum player. Um, so that was that was pretty awesome. That would have been a, a combined experience. <laughs> no, I agree. That's probably one of my highlights as well. <laughs> and big solos for all all three of you in that piece then probably. Oh yeah, with the open more and the trombone. Yeah, yeah, great. Right, fantastic. So we've got our face, first question here um, from Kate, Kate Broadbent for you, Toral. 
what percussion instruments do you have in your house? Maybe you could just swing your camera around because you did this earlier when we were just before. Can you do that to show us something of what you've got behind you? I share my bedroom with uh, my marimba here and vibraphone as well. Essentially, I've got all my gear in my room. Some of it's under my bed uh, and it's, uh, it's insane, you know. I finally kind of made a bit of space, but normally it's hard to walk around in there. In there. So yeah, uh, most of it's here. It's uh, very convenient for Zoom calls since everything's in one place. And um, I mean. also, uh, I guess I've got, uh, I mean, there's things you can't see as well, you know, loads of smaller drums as well. For example, my Zab is somewhere in a case behind the marimba. I've got a, a tambourine right here, which I've got handy. Um, uh, it's, it's ridiculous. There's so many things. Do you have any timpani at home? Just as a matter of interest. I'm not crazy. No. <laughs> Great. Brilliant. Right. So um, could you tell us a little bit about why you chose the instruments that you chose? And Eleanor Biles has asked, what age did you start playing? So shall we start with you, Maggie? Why the trombone and how old were you when you started? So I was nine when I started. It was eight or nine, I can't remember. Um, and yeah, my family were really musical. So my two half sisters um, played violin. Um, and my dad was a fan of, the, you know how like when you're really young, it doesn't sound the best. So <laughs> I think he was keen for me to like steer away like what my brothers did. So my brothers played um, trumpet, both of them. Um, I definitely thought I wanted to go brass, but I didn't want to be the same as them. So my parents just suggested trombone. Fun fact, I actually thought it was a tuba because I was, I was young. I didn't really know what it was. <laughs> so yeah, trombone, I turned up, it had a slide. I was very shocked, um, but here I am. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, and you and why why the oboe and how old were you when you started uh so i started when i was eight uh nearly nearly nine so an old eight-year-old um they just as soon as i got my two my two front teeth through basically i was choosing instruments um and it was between the, the oboe the flute and the trombone and i was i think i was definitely leaning, leaning toward the flute and the trombone and then uh, my teacher, who then taught me for the next 10 years, just sort of walked up to me. It was one of those try an instrument days, and you have loads of instruments around the room, and we were sort of wandering around. And she just walked up, and she gave me a plastic oboe that they had spare. I said, you just take it away. <laughs> just play the oboe a bit. I took it away for the summer, uh, played it, and then, yeah, started lessons soon after, and have stuck with it. Wow. <laughs> Great. And you, Toral, when did you start, and why percussion? Or did you play other things first? Or what, what, was, what was your journey? Uh, actually... Oh, hold on a minute. We've got a poll. Before you just hold that thought, Toral, the poll is about Maggie. Okay, it says Maggie loves sports. She used to play hockey for the Wales Academy, cricket for the Vale of Glamorgan, Glamorgan uh, rugby for the Welsh under 18s, or she was number three in the Welsh women's badminton rankings. Okay, so we'll see what everybody thinks is true about that. And let's go back to Toral. Why percussion and how old were you when you started? First of all, I'm really jealous we can't vote. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure. Maybe you can. Or can you not? No, maybe you can't. We'll, we'll have to sort that out. Uh, so, hang on. I've lost my train of thought. Oh, yeah. So, I started when I was uh, six. And so, we, we'd been kind of freshly... We could freshly move to England uh, from, from France. Uh, so, I couldn't really speak that much English, which was probably kind of infuriating for my teacher because he had to, you know, uh, kind of teach me more through just trying to get me to understand what was going on, but without, you know, normal English communication. Um, and uh, I chose percussion because, um, well, because I actually wanted to be a drummer before, uh, but I was like really small, so I wasn't put on a drum kit straight away. I got a, you know, practice pad, like, hang on. <laughs> like one of these ones. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, um, and a glockenspiel. 
uh, you know, one of the small one or two ones that you put on the stand. And uh, basically, as I started playing, you know, longer pieces with a bigger range, then I had to buy bigger and bigger instruments, which is how I ended up with a big one in my room now. <laughs> Great, fantastic. Right. So let's see the answer to Maggie's poll. It, let's see. So it looks like 54% think you played hockey for uh, the Wales Academy, uh, 19 rugby for the Welsh under 18s, 18% uh, thought you were number three in the Welsh women's badminton rankings, and 9% thought you played cricket for the Vale of Glamorgan. So, drum roll. Maggie, can you tell us the secrets? Yes. Yeah, so, I played hockey for the Wales Academy and cricket for the Vale of Glamorgan. So, both of them. <laughs> Both of those top two are true. Amazing. Yes. Wow. So how, how are you, you guys, are you sporty? You and do you do a lot of sport? Uh, I, nowadays it's, it's more of a struggle, um, especially during term time at uni. I, yeah, so I played throughout my childhood. I had, I played tennis and I used to do quite a lot of running, um, athletics. So for the athletics, I did 400 meters and triple jump. And I think I, I, when I was 13, I, I won the counties for 400 metres, but I, I, that was sort of as far as my running career went. And in tennis, I sort of I know, hovered around number 10 in the county, I think, for a while. But it, it, was, it was always slightly secondary to Oboe. Did you fight, Toral, were you sporty as a, as a young, younger person? Uh, I used to do martial arts, actually, Taekwondo. Uh, and uh, when it, around 2000. Ted, I think, I uh, did the Nationals as well. I got a gold medal, which was probably, you know, the pinnacle of my, um, of my sport achievement in my entire lifetime so far. So I don't think it would get much better than that anyway. <laughs> Amazing. Well done. So do you think sport and music go together as a, as a kind, you know, there are things that help you be a musician about playing sport or how, so Maggie, what, what do you think? You obviously did a lot of sport as a child. I did, yeah. It's kind of gotten less as I've grown older, just because music's come become more intense for me. But I still, I still like playing a little bit of cricket. Um, I love netball and I love playing badminton with my dad. Um, but for me, they're kind of similar mindset. Like you've got to be really focused. Like be healthy. Like music is like a sport you know you've got to keep your body fueled and ready to go you know to play so for me they relate i wish i did more sport than i do now but busy timetable <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Oh, there's often a choice isn't there between music and sport but i think it's really great when you can try and keep an element of both going and actually yeah. on a webinar coming up in a couple of weeks we've got an olympic fencer coming to talk to us about that and a sports psychologist so that's going to be really exciting so Toro, we've got a question from Horatio who wants to know, how do you have time to practice so many instruments? <sighs> I mean, you just make time, don't you? I mean, it's, I guess it's the same thing for, for any instrument. Uh, I do spend quite a lot of time on marimba, more than anything else. And, you know, for example, when... Uh, there's, there's usually a kind of saying in music, which is that when you do a lot of orchestral work then your solo work starts to uh get less good and the other way around is also true uh and it's kind of it's even worse for percussion because there's some instruments which only apply really in an orchestral context for example timpani and so you know i've kind of neglected it while i was preparing for being a musician i didn't really play any timpani either but again you know you kind of pick those things back up when um when you really need to to use them, you know, and things like this. Yeah, so it kind of goes in phases of, of you practicing certain things and yeah, great. Okay, we've got a question from Kate, which is a very sweet question. Do you remember what color your hoodies were when you were in NCO? Did you have NCO hoodies? Yeah. Ewan, do you want to, do you, did you have one? Yes, I had a couple at the time. I think blue, if I remember correctly. I think it was blue every time. Maybe. Maggie, did you have one? Yeah, I had like the sky blue. Like the light blue one, yeah, I think. Yeah, I did. <laughs> and Coral, did you have one? I had a, a burgundy one, actually. There we are. So two blues and a burgundy. Excellent. <laughs> um, now, I just wanted to ask you about your the, the category final, um, because you obviously have to put together an incredible programme, don't you? 
um, to try and show all your different skills and different musicalities, different techniques. How you and tell me about how you went about putting together that program that is now it's now available on the BBC iPlayer. If anybody hasn't watched it already, I totally recommend that you watch all these guys in action. They're they're awesome. So tell us about your program, Ewan. Uh, yeah, the, oh, the program took a long time to think about, and it went under loads of revisions. It was, I mean, truly kind of half the beast of the, the entire process. Um, and I, you know, I it was settled on at the last second by a sudden recommendation by my accompanist of a piece that actually fitted perfectly. Oh, we've got another poll. Just pause your thought. Let it, <laughs> we'll come back to that. So, um, Toril's performance of the piece by uh, Georges Apagis at the BBC I Musician Final was described by Owen, the commentator Owen Gunnell as outrageous, insane, ridiculous, captivating, something I will remember for eternity or all of the above. Okay, so mm -hmm. have a think about that and we'll come back to, um, to Ewan. Um, tell us again about your programme. Yes, so uh, essentially it was a last minute, everything found a place. Um, because we were looking for a, a sort of a four minute baroque piece that was slow, that was sort of perfectly pretty and, you know, a, um, captivating and one that I really felt I could uh, play to the best of my ability. And at the start, last second, my teacher recommended the Marcello slow movement and everything, everything worked. Um, and I ended up with a program of four four minute pieces, which was sort of very perfectly balanced given the 16 minute time cap. Um, but it, it was, you know, it was quite serendipitous. It, it really, but at the same time, we spent a long time stressing about it and scouring the internet because it is so important. Yeah. I loved, well, I just thought it was such a genius program that the amount of variety that you managed to create in that, in that sort of 16 minutes or whatever it was, <laughs> was incredible. And the, the jazz, bringing the double bass in and the, and the jazz ending was so great. How did you find that piece? Was that a YouTube discovery or an arrangement or? Oh, I've, I've played that piece so many times. That's been a okay. staple for about two years now right. um, in, in most competitions that I do, because it's, it's such a great ending piece. And it yeah. was the piece that I, the one piece I brought through from each round to the next in BBC, um, because it was, yeah, it, it just, as an ending piece, I, I couldn't find one that was better than it. But that, that's quite well known in the overworld. Um, <laughs> the, the really modern piece that I did uh, second, the Praying Mantis. Praying Mantis, piece, yeah. That's, you know, that's never, that doesn't have any published or online recordings of anything. That, that's, that was very niche, uh, sort of quite a, that was quite an obscure find. Right, great. And Maggie, how did you put your program together? Yeah, well, before that, I was actually in the audience when you were playing. Um, and he comes out with this jazz piece. I just turned to my mum and I was like, how did he make the oboe sound cool? <laughs> <laughs> I loved it. It was great. <laughs> yeah. So for my programme, um, I originally started off completely different to what I played. Um, and I took it to my teacher. And, like, it was fine. But he's um, he was actually in the brass final of BBC Young Musician. I can't remember when, a while ago. Um, so it really helped having him there because um, he kind of knew what ways to go and like what suit of my playing. Um, so like, I always think having a contemporary piece was kind of normal for the show. But my heart's not really into contemporary and I thought it was really important for me to play something that I really enjoyed playing so I could get that across and um, so like I had a jazzy contemporary one to start my program which for me was perfect um, and then yeah my teacher arranged the second piece I played which was also great because not many people have played it like that um, and then the third piece I played is kind of a classic in the trombone world so that's it that's how I Mm. I have to say, I absolutely loved your Elgar. It seemed like you just went to a whole other place with that. It was just yeah, absolutely loved beautiful. It. Yeah, <laughs> loved it. Okay, Toral, let's see the answer to your poll. 60% um, think Owen used all those words to describe your pieces. 22% something I'll remember for eternity, eternity. And then a few others on the, on the rest. Do you know what the answer is to this question? Pretty sure it was all of them, wasn't it? Yeah, it was all of them. It was all of them, he said mm -hmm. afterwards. Um, so this, I don't know if any of you haven't seen this piece. Um, 
the George Apergy's piece that, that Toro played. It was, was the middle piece in your program, was it? Yeah. Am I right? Yes. And it, tell us a little bit about it, because it, it um, it's an, just a crazy piece. It is, yeah. Uh, so it's, first of all, it's uh, written uh, for a drum which I couldn't play a year ago, uh, which is called Vizab. It's uh, from Iran, or, you know, kind of a Persian uh, kind of uh, golf. And um, it, so it's scored for this drum and also for voice at the same time. So when I say voice, it's not singer. It's, uh, well, it's difficult to, to show really. But um, vocalizing, I think, is probably the best way to put it. Uh, and there's, a, there's kind of a um, real intertwining of uh, the voice and the drum together. And what it's supposed to kind of tell, because there's, a, there's a, an element of storytelling in that piece. Actually, it's divided into three bits, which is the first bit is called uh, the tale. The second bit is called, no, sorry, first bit is called prelude, then the tale, and then uh, the struggle. And uh, it kind of seems to represent um, yeah, a kind of battle between uh, the percussionist and the Zab, and the percussionist has his own breath as well. There's quite a lot of, of breathing involved, which is actually scored in the music. Um, and on top of that, there is a text which is written by a Pegas, which itself, you know, at face value, it's, it's, it's in French, which helps because I speak French fluently. Um, and it actually literally describes a motorcycle race uh, which is it's, it's quite strange you know it's not something you'd expect in in that kind of piece it seems almost a bit out of place well when you you know look at the actual imagery which is being used it's there's quite a lot of gore in it really there's you know there's descriptions of blood and you know screams everywhere because uh, the motorcycle dr well the motorcyclist seems to hurt himself in some way but what matters in that text is actually the kind of tension that goes with competition and with uh, adversity as well. Uh, and so what I was hoping to do in that piece was to communicate, you know, kind of the, the strengths of the stress of, of uh, having to fight with, uh, with my drum. And, uh, and yeah, and uh, it, it becomes a, a lot more apparent as well at the end. Uh, because again, it's a kind of piece that unfolds at the beginning. You don't really know what's going to happen. I just seem to be making weird noises and the occasional drumming. And then at the end, it completely flips around and it becomes absolutely hectic, almost. You know, there's uh, quite a lot of elements happening in very short spaces of time. Did so, you see that, you? And did you see him do it? Uh, well, I saw, I've watched it. Um, I've watched it now twice in full. I watched the broadcast when it was done as well, because it was just probably was brilliant. Um, I didn't see it live at the time. Uh, I, I wasn't going to percussion final but yes i've seen it three times now online and it's just <laughs> it's amazing have you seen it maggie yeah i cracked up when you just took a drink it's <laughs> <laughs> a moment with a glass of water at the end isn't there it's really kind of poised and theatrical and then yeah. it's the end yeah the music sorry this yeah. isn't actually included in the music <laughs> uh the thing is this piece was written for a percussionist called jean-pierre Drouet in like uh, the 80s, I think. And um, and what he decided to do, because normally what the piece says is just to you know look on the right for a certain amount of times and then it gets longer and longer. But what he added was a glass of wine, uh, which I originally tried to do, but I couldn't. I can have a glass made of glass, first of all, you know, for obvious health and safety reasons. I couldn't have wine or anything, well, you know, because I had another piece to play. I couldn't have water, which was coloured to look like wine, because this is a young musician programme. <laughs> I couldn't have in a wine glass, because that, was, that could represent drinking wine, and it's a young musician programme. So I had to settle with a plexiglass glass <laughs> full of water. <laughs> Oh, well, it, it still was very dramatic and very theatrical. So I've got a fantastic question actually here now for all of you. Um, but, uh, Katie Messenger wants to, wants to know, if you were an astronaut, which piece of music would you take into space with you? If you could take one piece of music with you, Maggie, what would it be? So 
I've always had a really soft spot for Alpine Symphony. I can listen to it over and over again, never get bored. Um, yeah, I can listen to it twice through in one sitting, to be honest. <laughs> I love it, so I'd take yeah. that, yeah. Great, that's a brilliant one to take. Uh, Ewan, what piece would you take to space? Oh, that's tough. Um, uh, Maggie actually took one of my favourite pieces there. Oh, so you I, take it too. <laughs> I think I would have said Marla 9, I'd say. Yeah. Marla 9, very good. And Tora, what would you take to space? Appropriately, probably the planets. <laughs> <laughs> Classic. Very good, very good answer. Okay, we've got a, pre a, a question from Lucy and Eleanor. Do you like practicing scales? Uh, do you want to take that, Ewan? Um, yes, I believe. I, it's been, there was sort of, once you get um, to a certain point, I think I actually neglected scales a little bit for many years. As soon as, you know, I got the grade eight, grade eight out of the way and I went, okay, thank, thank God, I'm done with those for a while. Um, especially since going to... Uh, to, to higher education. So I, I study um, in Oxford, but I get lessons at the Royal Academy with, with a teacher there. And she obviously started uh, sort of preparing me as it, as it is to, for the sort of... Um, oh, oh, another poll come up. <laughs> another poll for you. Carry on. This is about his favourite food. People can vote on it, I think. Yeah. Off you go. You keep going. Um, so I... Yeah, so I have lessons with her and she obviously sort of started preparing me in the same way as she would with her pupils for like a technical exam which would be where you do scales and excerpts and things like that. So I started doing scales in thirds, fourths, fifths, sixths, etc. Et and um, in a, you know, every permutation possible. And actually now, they're, now they start my practice and I actually quite enjoy them. They're, they're a good way to warm up. And I feel slightly lost if I don't do them at the start of my practice now. So now they're routine, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Here we are. Now we can now we can vote on the on your on Ewan's um poll. His secret food love is prawn cocktail, crisps, vindaloo curry, Cadbury's twirl, tuna fish, coffee, and Percy pigs. And the team in the um NCO office are, are really intrigued to know what the answer to this one is because I didn't tell them. So um mm. we'll see what everybody thinks. Brilliant. Um okay um Maggie, you're at the Royal Academy now. Um, yeah. How important is it to be kind of surrounded by like-minded musicians, would you say, when you're studying? So, for me, it's great. Um, especially being in first year, you've got a lot of guys with um, more experience than you, um, either performing or just in general. And for me, I'm learning something almost every day. Like, even if it's just how to play something in a different style, like, it's great to get different players playing different things. Um, not even just on your instrument. Um, like a lot of my friends don't play brass. Um, and yeah, just being around them all day. <laughs> it's great. Yeah, I like it. Brilliant. So it looks like we've got our results here. It's quite even actually. Uh, top voting is Percy Pigs followed by prawn cocktail crisps, followed by, oh no, Cadbury's, Cadbury's Twirl is top, sorry. Uh, then Percy Pigs, then prawn cocktail crisps, then Vindaloo, then tuna fish, then coffee. So tell us, what's the answer to that then, Ewan? Well, I can't quite remember, but the top five, with every single one except Percy Pigs, are pretty much all my favourite food. <laughs> I love Not food. Percy Pigs! I don't, I, I'm fine with Percy Pigs, they're just not, that's the only one. <laughs> thing except Percy Pigs, I believe. Big coffee drinker, I like spicy curry a lot. Yeah, that's... They're all, they're all your favourites apart from Percy Pigs, but you, you would indulge in a Percy Pig if you were offered. Yeah, yeah, yeah. someone... <laughs> Jolly good. Okay, I'm just going to do a quick um, screen share now. Um, oh, hang on. Uh, not of this moment, but of of you guys um, in the competition. Um, so here you are, um, having. Um, I think that's you in NCO, isn't it? Isn't it you in? Yes. So well, these are both NCO related. The one on the left, I'm I'm nine, I think. I yeah. yeah. I, that was the f that was a Lady Hume scholarship award day thing. Yeah. Uh, when I had the the most ridiculous hair. <laughs> <laughs> And it's not permed, that's just exactly how my hair grew. It's um, very 
Great. Oh, sorry, I skipped on. What's this one? Um, that's from a concert. I maybe when I was playing, I've been playing over for like five, six months. I'd say at this point, I was sort of a young nine-year-old. I, I have an even more ridiculous, <laughs> um, stuff like hair on top, and I'm playing the Chimarosa Oboe Concerto. This is actually the most popular video of me online, which is um. Oh. How lovely. I'll have to look it up. I haven't seen it. So here you are, Maggie, in Young Musician of the Year. And here's you as, a, as your younger self, 13-year-old, studying Cardiff. That um, photo was actually taken um, on NCO. They did, like, a photo shoot for trombones or something. Oh. Um, so, yeah, that's me in NCO. I can't remember which one. Looks like, um, like main orchestra, but I don't know. <laughs> and this is the brass group of yours? Yeah, so that one was in Wells my final year in Wales. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was great. And Toral, this is the piece that he played that we were just talking about. And um, this is him in action on all the different hits that he, he's been playing in Young Musician. And this one, tell us about this one, Toral. This was on my very first NCO course back in summer 20, 2010, 11, maybe. Yeah, mm -hmm. so uh, I was right. at that point. Yeah. You, sorry, you were eight, did you say? Nine. Nine. Yeah, very tiny, very sweet. And I'm, I'm liking the badge. Yeah. So um, that brings me now to last week. You, uh, we did our webinar selfie with these amazing politicians, Sangam Debonair and Emily Ben. Um, so you sent in a lot of your, uh, th which we'll just share, share with you now, a lot of your selfies. Some of you joined the NYO Planet. Some of you joined the virtual Benedetti sessions. And these are the pictures that you sent in. Look at all you guys having fun with the webinar last week and doing all sorts of different crazy things, crazy moves and fun looks. It's so great for us to see these. Please do keep sending them in. Here, look at this amazing Harry Potter thing going on. Um, full on uh, uniform and magic wands and Hedwig and everything. Brilliant. And lots of smiles and lots of fun. And I think that was a Spurs shirt because Emily was a Spurs fan. So that was in her honour. And these are now the um, NYO uh, Ode to Joy. Oh, no, there's another webinar. Um, and more webinars. Oh, why is it going backwards and forwards? Sorry. More webinars. Here we are. Um, it's a French horn like that, just in case you didn't know. <laughs> And a lot of you, a lot, a lot of people, there's some multi-tracking there from Katie Baker, which was amazing. Um, lots of you playing on your drives for the um, MYO Planet, Musical Planet. Again, that's a lovely picture outside Litchfield Cathedral, I think, for the NYO thing. And there's more NYO. And there we go. So I'll end our screen sharing there for now um, until we have our next poll, which I need to... Um, uh, oh, here's Maggie's poll, a poll for Maggie, which says Maggie will take crisps over chocolate any day. Her favourite flavour is Flaming Hot Doritos, Worcester sauce, roast beef and peppercorn sauce, pickled onion or roast ham and cranberry. And we'll find out the answer to that in just a minute. OK, now lots and lots of children are asking, how do you deal with nerves and what does it feel like in the grand finale? So um, how um you and can i ask you did you did you feel nervous in as you walked out to do that uh how did it feel uh it was extremely nervous backstage it was nervous being in cardiff <laughs> for the two days that we were there uh, for the category finals um the, the the least nervous was when i think i was actually going out on the stage as soon as you're out on stage it, it disappears because there's nothing you can do to control it at that point you know in, in the in the hours before the competition happens in your mind you're thinking i could be practicing but if i'm practicing am i taking away my stamina for later or am I? it you're not you're no longer trapped in your own head when you go out on stage you're only thinking about communicating outwardly and and so no i i, I wasn't actually nervous on stage but i was nervous at every other point during the process what about you maggie did were you nervous you did none of you actually looked at all nervous but that i'm sure that's a you know how was it for you maggie yeah, I was extremely nervous. I I feel like it's hard not to be nervous um, in a competition like that. I mean, for me, I was really lucky because it was in my hometown. So a lot of my family could be there. Um, but yeah, the moment before you walk out, like my heart rate shot up. 
and then you step out and then you're just like, oh, you've got to do it. Um, play your heart out, basically. Whatever happens, happens. Like you said, if something goes wrong, something goes wrong. If something goes right, great, you know? So you just got to be in the moment. Yeah. Great. Okay, let's look at the results for your poll. 50% uh, seem to think that you like Flaming Hot Doritos, Maggie. Is that right? You guys are so clever. Yes, it is. <laughs> Hang on, how do they know that about you? There's something flaming hot about you, obviously. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm actually vegan, so I can't eat half the other crisps, so I'm glad I didn't say that before. <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah. we had another vegan on last week so we're getting we're getting you can get vegan percy pigs by the way did you know that I, oh i know you can <laughs> i've had them <laughs> really good yeah. there's lots of un, unlikely sweets that are vegan i discovered yeah. last week in my research great so that's that's brilliant um so i've got a question now for you from jasmine singh for you Toral. have you ever had an embarrassing moment while performing <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have, actually. Uh, this was... Actually, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say this since it might come up in a poll. But, uh, uh, no, it won't, I don't think. That's great. Uh, <laughs> um, so this was back in year, year two, I think. Uh, and it was at the Christmas concert that my uh, infant school was hosting at church. And we were playing Little Drum Boy. And I was playing with snare drum for that. And I dropped my stick. And it was terrible because you can't, you know... I can play with one stick, so I kind of, it, it it's blurry, but I remember a kind of crushing feeling of awkwardness. Uh, <laughs> and uh, so I, I think I kind of just shuffled behind a pillar of, of the church and tried to wait until the end. Oh, that sounds really sad. I hope you weren't scarred for life from that experience. Have you, you, and ever had anything embarrassing happen to you? Oh, yes. Um... <laughs> I'm sure it's happened. I'm sure many things embarrassing have happened over time. But the one that sticks out is the my first ever NCO regional, which was the first ever time I'd done anything with NCO when I was like nine. I really hadn't been playing that long, um, and I hadn't played in an orchestral setting before. This was the first time playing in an orchestra, and I was at the very bottom of like a seven-person oboe section, um, playing a piece. I believe it was River Dance. It was called, and it was endlessly changing time signatures. It was very weird. It was all compound time signatures, but it was changing all the time, and I really couldn't keep track at all. I couldn't stay in an ensemble. And in the end, started crying and ended up running outside to the toilet halfway through rehearsal. So that was, it's quite sad. But then again, 10 years, I can look back 10 years later and go, ah, yeah. I think we've all had that experience of sitting in an orchestra and actually not, not knowing what is going on. <laughs> and being... <laughs> you remember that, Maggie? hundred percent, yeah. I've had moments where I'm like, what is going on? <laughs> yeah, it's not a nice feeling. I have to, it's not nice. <laughs> no, it isn't nice. Yeah. Great. Um, so, um, I've got a question here. What, um, you, what would you, what did you want to be when you were little? Did you always want to be a musician or um, was there something else you wanted to be? Uh, I didn't want to be a musician until when I was maybe 16, potentially 17. It was quite late when I sort of came round to it. I think part of that was I'd been doing music since I was very young and my entire family did music. And so I sort of thought in my head, uh, maybe, I, maybe I want to explore other options. And I, for a while, and this is going to sound very boring and stuffy, I wanted to do law for a while um, or potentially history and then study history and then do law. And there was also a time where I considered doing PPE, which is a politics philosophy and ethics degree um and then i think i snapped out of it when i was 16 17 and went no if i have the chance to do music which is so much more interesting than all these other options i was thinking of in my head why wouldn't I, why would i not take that option um and i i don't regret that at all i am so glad that i'm studying music didn't you didn't you mention that you wanted to be a singer songwriter or something when you were, when you were really young oh yes no that's true i um not even when I was really young, potentially <laughs> when I was a bit older as well. Um, I, yeah, so I used to, from the ages of 12 to 15, maybe I used to write a lot of songs and sing songs. And I, I'm, I'm sure these two will remember I did loads in the NCO talent shows. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. As an NCO talent show, I'd be there, I'd perform a song that I wrote. <laughs> and that was, so that okay. was. Okay, we've 
got another poll and it's about your pets. So before anybody votes, um, these are some pets that belong to our guests, okay? This is the, the first group of pets. There's four dogs here. Um, they belong to one of our guests. So number one is these four dogs. Say, say who you think they, they belong to. There they are again. Then our second group of pets belong to another one of our guests. These adorable little kittens belong to one of them. And our third um, pet is this beautiful little cat who apparently has only three legs. So a very special cat. So let's see how the voting goes. That's the end of our pets, uh, pets section. And let's see, what do the polls say? Um, it's looking like 51% uh, Maggie think that you that the, the dogs belong to you um, and 41% think the kittens belong to you Ewan and 55% think that the cat belongs to Toral so what what what's what what is that right guys yeah. that's very clever <laughs> Yeah. That is absolutely bang on. So Meg, yeah. Meg are the, are the dogs. These lovely, lovely, friendly. What are they called, Meg? Um, so the Springer um, on the left is called Shiro. Um, the Golden Lab is called Harley. And um, the Husky is Coco. And then the Bull Mastiff is Fion. Wow, amazing. And the, and the little yeah. kids that belong to you, Ewan, who are they? Uh, so the one on the left, who's grey and white, that's Misty. Um, and the one on the right, sort of a mixture of brown and darker brown, is Suki. Um, Great. And the, and, the, and the cat, this cat, of course, is Toral. What's her name? Uh, she's called Meg. Meg. Oh, oh not... that's a good name. Good name. <laughs> <laughs> a good name. Brilliant. So we found out exactly what, um, what pet you have at home. That's brilliant. Great, so we're coming close to the end. Oh my goodness, we're running out of time. So we have to think um, now about our webinar selfie moment. Okay. Um, so, um, have you got something there to as, as a prop or as a um, something to hold up so we can do a fun selfie? So I, in your honor, Toral, have bought, brought a tambourine to the table today and a maracas. Yeah. Okay, so how can we do something fun um yeah great <laughs> too long. Well, you could do something better than that <laughs> what can you do it's too complicated too yeah. complicated <laughs> yeah that's good that's good okay so here we are here's our webinar selfie for today three two one <laughs> great well hopefully you've, you've taken your pictures that's great we really look forward to seeing them and having you send them in um, now, let me tell you about the webinars that we've got coming up um, now um, in the next couple of weeks, because we've got lots of exciting things coming up. Next week, next Friday on June the 12th, we're going to be joined by Anna Meredith and Sam Thompson, who are both amazing composers that write for all different sorts of, they write for the concert platform, they've written for the proms, but they've also written for video games and for bands and for recordings and all sorts of different um, genres so um, they're going to be joining us next week and then the following week after that what I mentioned earlier we're going to be joined by some Team GB or Team GB athlete Claire Bennett who was um, part of the British fencing team and Dr Alison Rodius who's a sports psychologist so she's they're both going to be there to tell us a little bit about what um, what musicians can learn from athletes and um, about a lot of the crossover that we were talking about earlier and then on Friday the 26th, we're going to be joined by two amazing um, musicians from the Royal Opera House in Covent Garden. Um, Ailish Tynan, who is an incredible soprano um, and an amazingly entertaining and fun lady. And Hetty Snell, who's also um, a legend. Uh, she's a cellist, a uh, principal cellist in Covent Garden, was in NCO, is also an NCO tutor now. So we're going to be talking about all things opera with those guys. So we very much um, hope to see you um, at our future webinars. Now, your opinion matters to us because, you, as you know, we're about to um, think about what we might offer as a digital membership at NCO. And there's a survey about to go out to you and your parents from all of us to ask you what you would want um, from a digital membership. Um, and so that we can shape it in the best way for all of you and make sure we do it 
as, as well as we possibly can. So as soon as that survey lands, which will be very soon, um, could you make sure you fill it in for us? And then we will do our very best to, um, to create the most exciting digital membership that we can. So um, I, that really, all that needs me to do really is to say a huge big thank you to our amazing guests who've been here today um, and to um, ask them for one tiny little message what would you have said to your 12 year old self what advice might you give uh, who'd like to go first Laurel, do you, you, look, you look ready to go do you want to go first um probably not to you know to worry more about trajectory more than anything you know where you want to end up instead of uh, in in the long term um i think i did quite a lot too much worrying when i was younger and uh most of it doesn't really matter in the end you you end up forgetting i think it becomes so insignificant in your later life that uh, yeah go for the things that matter i think brilliant advice stop worrying about anything <laughs> worrying is a waste of time <laughs> great Maggie. what advice would you give your 12 year old self probably just have fun in everything you're doing like do lots of different things like a variety of things Sport, music, cooking, anything really. Just enjoy your young life. <laughs> <laughs> Great advice. Fantastic. And you, and final piece of advice for your 12 year old self. Um, I think it's going gonna, it's gonna to come, come across similar lines, but I think it's just embrace everything you do to the extent, to uh, as great an extent as you possibly can when you're that age. So, really, uh, do ev if you're going to commit to something, do it to the you know the nth degree. So Ferencio, enjoy it as much as possible, and make as many memories as possible, and as many friends as possible, and stay in contact as much as possible as well. I think that's mm. a, a, a very important thing to to say. Do you all have networks of friends that were st are you still in touch with people from NCO? Yeah, yeah. Half, half of all the people on social media, are, you know, people I know from the musical world. So yeah, yeah. it's a very small world. Yeah, they, they pop up everywhere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, Brilliant. Great. Well, thank you so much, guys. Um, you have been an inspiration. And if anybody hasn't seen um, their performances, they're all on the BBC iPlayer. Um, you can see them in all sorts of different um, ways, also amazing repertoire, and you're just inspirational. Thank you so much for sharing this afternoon with us all. And good luck with all your future endeavours, and we look forward to following all your achievements going forward. Thanks very much. Goodbye. See you soon. Bye. Bye.